find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome, it's the awesome cast 225. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters down here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm checked in on the swarm and everything tonight, guys. Uh, ready to get geeky, get tech, and uh, hey, hey, you're, you're enough for PodCamp Pittsburgh this week, guys. Holy crap, it's this weekend. Uh, go check out PodCampPittsburgh.com, we'll be there uh, doing, doing PodCampy things. I'll be talking about video podcasting, which is what we do and um and we'll be doing an awesome cast live there friday at uh i'm no friday not friday sunday at i believe it's 2 p.m uh so go check that out i don't know if we'll be we'll be streaming live in some capacity probably not full on capacity depends on what i can hook up to there uh so we'll see what happens then so uh go tune in for that and that'll probably be the episode for next week as well uh so uh it'll be fun we always have a good time there out of pod camp and the puppies on the couch again uh I, <laughs> Who is joining Katie Dudas at K Dudders on the Twitter? How are you doing this week? Good. I have a I have a puppy on my lap. You do have a puppy on your lap. <laughs> they were they were they were, they were having a good time, enjoying pizza, yep. etc. So pizza in my belly, doggy on my lap. I'm good. <laughs> yes. And also coming at coming at us from his home studio is John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter. How are you doing, sir? Hey, pretty good. How are you doing? All right, all right. Um, so this is your off week. This is your home week. This is my home week, which is it, it's bitterly cold out there for for any of you that aren't in the Pittsburgh area. It, it's it's just just horrible, horribly cold. So it was nice to not have to to retrudge out after work. To be honest with you. Yes. Yes. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's what I say to you, buddy. <laughs> But this is the awesome cast. We're here every Tuesday about 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, start between 6.30 and 7 p.m. Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You can join us in the chat room just like uh, Chachi, Intern Mike, uh, Juggler John, and Wheels do uh, every week here. And uh, you can also uh, follow us on Twitter at AwesomeCast. Look up AwesomeCast on Facebook, on Google+. And you can drop us a line to AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com. And please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio so you don't miss an episode of what we're doing here. And uh, with that, let's get started with our awesome thing of the week. Uh, Chilla, what do you got here? Mine's, mine's actually pretty simple. Okay. Um, but... I, I, I will I will be honest with you. I've become addicted to them. Uh, mine is the High Rise from Twelve South, which Twelve South makes items like the Book Book and different cases and whatnot for for phones and, and, and tablets alike. But the, what they made is they made this this stand, and it's probably kind of hard to see depending on the lighting. Um, but it's a stand that actually raises your and it'll actually work with any iPhone or even the iPad mini. Um, I've actually used it with the iPad Air and it doesn't topple. I think they're more worried about the weight. Um, the interesting thing is it also will work with practically any case. So, and, and I actually originally got one of these for work because when you have your phone and you put it in any kind of dock or, or anything of a, of, a, of a typical nature, you lose access to the headphone jack. Um, mm. This, by raising up your device, then still allows you connectivity to the bottom of the device, and if you use speakerphone or anything, everything works well. Um, I got so used to having it at work, I got one for my desk at home, and I got another one for my nightstand because with the new iPhone, I actually got the body glove case, which is is probably less than a centimeter too thick to put in a typical dock and some of the cables that I actually have that are not standard. Um, the device actually comes with these little clips and it's kind of hard to explain. It's almost like a wedge with a hole in it. 
um, you take and you slide the standard Apple um, lightning connector into it, lock it into place in the, in the thing, and it actually, what it does is it raises up the nub on the lightning connector um, further and further. So what it ends up allowing you to do, and the, the clips are numbered, then it's zero, two, and five. Um, by raising that up, obviously you can go deeper into a case. And they, they give you a handy dandy um, fit guide, which like for the iPhone on no case, you use zero. Um, for the Griffin reveal case, you use a two. For the in case pro snap, you use zero. And it goes all the way up to the OtterBox Defender, which is the one thing you use the five for. And if you've ever seen an OtterBox, that they're pretty thick on the bottom, so it actually works extremely well. The only gripe I have is for the price. Um, you do have to a put it together yourself. So it comes in this nice little box, very slim line. Um, it comes in a nice little box, but. So you have to put it together, which it actually, when it comes and ships, the device, you take off the, this bottom plastic piece, which I watch, I'm going to break it, which comes with an Allen. I'm not going to take it back apart. But it actually comes with an Allen wrench um, to put the two metal pieces on with the screws. But it does not come with the lightning connector. Oh. So you do, have, you do have to supply your own lightning connector, which, as you can see, um, I chose black stands because it comes in black and silver. Um, but my cable is white because um, that's what I had. What I What is black. the difference between the regular and the, and the deluxe? Uh, that I do not know. It could be in the way that it slides. Uh, or it could be the high-rise deluxe. There's a bezel on the deluxe, and it looks like it. So, yeah, I'm looking. There's like the, some kind of adjustment back. lever or something, right? Or maybe that's it. The, the deluxe does not have to be put together oh, as there much. You go. So on here, when you when you screw in the... the it incl incl includes a certified lightning cable and micro USB cable. So they okay. they give you the cable at that point. So, so it's an this extra 20 bucks. Piece, the, the back piece, actually, when you screw it into place, it can slide forward and back. So whatever case you have, it, uh, you can make sure it rests properly against the back piece. Um, but I, don't, I, I, I really, really like them, and um, which I think you're going to talk about, is it makes Siri work, work very well, whether you're at your desk or in bed or wherever. Mm -hmm. It's really important to get that up, like kind of off of the surface, because I know I have, I have a um, uh, in the bathroom we have a stereo that it goes into, and it's like kind of you know it's it's it, it's concaved in. You put the phone down into it, even though we have a little you know the the lightning to pin adapter, um, it it can't get to the speaker or it can't get to the microphone. It's too loud. Um, so yeah, something like this that gets it up off definitely helps out. And they do sell them on Amazon. Um, I got mine on Amazon, unfortunately, because I wanted black. It took a little bit. Even though I got Prime, mm -hmm. it did not come in the typical Prime shipping time. Awesome. So that's the uh, it was by 12 South. It's the High Rise or the High Rise Deluxe. And you can go check that out. We'll get an Amazon link over on the show post as well. So, um yeah, my awesome thing is Siri, because uh, the first, like I said, I was a little sick last week. Um, you guys might have noticed the post didn't go up until a little later on Wednesday than usual. Um, but uh, but, th but that morning when I couldn't move, uh, the greatest thing was being able to say, hey, Siri, you know, you know, call my wife or hey, Siri, this or hey, Siri, what's going on? Or hey, Siri, do I have email? Um, I ended up like. Because I couldn't go anywhere else, <laughs> having conversations with Siri, um, so I it, it really kind of highlighted uh, uh, how awesome it is to have this technology in in kind of your, like your time of need, right? Uh, so I, you know, I it, that's really all I have for that. Um, it was just as long as you don't lose your voice, as long as you don't lose your voice. Mm -hmm. But even that, I mean, it, it's really as raspy as my voice can be. 
as I get sick. It's it's re- I have been re- really surprised at uh, like, you know, you wake up in the morning and that's when it's the worst. Right. And that's when mm-hmm. I'm like going to go, you know, hey, Siri, what's the weather or hey, Siri, this and you're like and, and thinking no way is it going to pick this up. And it does. And it's been really good to, to responding to, to, to that kind of uh, uh, voice for me, you know. So I, I don't know. Do you, are you guys do you, do you guys use tend to use it more when you're sick or you know uh, does does it, does it help you there? I became reacquainted. Lucky six. <laughs> so yeah. No, wait, 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 wait. So you, so so you came in here last week. Yes. With a with a with test driving a, a new S5. Sam's S five. Yeah. And you went back. Mm-hmm. And you upgraded to the bigger phone. Six. <laughs> That's a six, not a six plus, right? No, correct. Yeah. Okay. Six plus was too much. I yeah, happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm back. On so the so you're re- reacquainting with it. Yes, how yes. how are you feeling with that? Good. It was funny because I was driving back from my uh, mom's the other day, and it's about an hour drive from Mama Dutter's house to down here. And I was playing with Hey Siri, mm-hmm. and um, it was I, I was trying to try to think of random commands that I could ask. As, as I wake Siri up on your phone. I'm going to unplug my phone for the rest of this uh, sequence. But something fun that I, I've never used it for was uh, a song came on the radio and I was like, hey, Siri. I said, Who's, what <laughs> what band sings this song? And it it identified it for me, which I, I thought was kind of fun. And um, I was asked, like the basic thing, whether when the pens played again. Um, I, I actually made an appointment to get new tires as I was driving down and I told her, you know, make a little appointment for me. Actually, no, wait, I told him. My Siri is a boy because you could change voices. And I wanted to hear what the boy voice sounded like. I'm different. <laughs> uh, my, my mother uh, is always big on sale. Oh, I have the I have the guy Siri. He's my manservant. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That, that's kind of how she says it, too. So. I, I wish they would let you change the accent. Yes. I would like I would like to use the British accent. But you uh, you can on the Mac OS on the on the laptop desktop whatever OS you can you can pick your voice um, if you ha- if you're using some of the voiceover stuff or any of the, the voice command but you can't necessarily change it on the phone which kind of bums me out you can do it, I think by going through some location changes but then it changes everything like your keyboard layout and a bunch of other stuff so, but, side note I'm also upset because I had a, a Ichabod crane from Sleepy Hollow on Waze for a few weeks and they just deleted it after Halloween Ah. Like, like yet yet I can still use Terry Crews. I what what the heck is this? I actually found one I liked. It says, Turn your carriage around. You know, oh, you've arrived. And, you know, like that was the greatest voice for that thing. But I don't know. It, it, it just like deleted it off my phone. I, I'm I, I'm 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 an unimpressed ways. I want my Ichabod crane back. But anyways. Um, but you have, was anything else about your, about your transition back over to iPhone? I, I, I couldn't believe how I, I, I have not, I, I've tried to not be on any sort of side Android versus iPhone because I, I've tried to go both directions, but it was the S5 back to this. I, I can't tell you how much happier I am. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everybody who likes Android, but I just, I've just, so much more comfortable with this. I, I don't know what it was, but the interface and everything was just like, okay, this is back to normal. Mm-hmm. Um, the point and shoot with the camera, that, that was one of the big problems I had with the S5 was the, the amount of functions to take a good picture. And the pictures were amazing when I had the time to, to adjust all the, the things. But when I wanted to just point and click, it wasn't there. And, and now having it back, I'm back taking pictures on, you know, driving across Liberty Bridge, I'm turning back to the city and taking pictures and they're coming out nice. So... Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty happy with going back. All safely while driving, of course. No, it's in passenger side. Oh, okay. Never mind. What's up? Never mind. (laughs) Nothing but safety. Right. Right. (laughs) Awesome. Um, Well, and you're a long time uh, Android user. Yeah. This was I. What I switched to an iPhone. Was it this year? Yeah, I think it was this year. Yeah. So I mean, it's only before that's been. I mean, I've had every incarnation. I had the original Galaxy, the Nexus. I've had uh, HTC, you know, uh, uh, several incarnations. I've even had a BlackBerry Storm just because I want everybody to feel bad for me that I've owned some crap phones. <laughs> so I deserve nice phones now. Now it's time to treat yourself. But, but that, that is not your awesome thing of the week. No, it's not. My awesome thing of the week involves Target. 
I think I'm going to try to work Target in every show. Um, something cool they're now doing with the app, if you've never downloaded um, any of the Target apps, they're, they're fantastic, especially if you're a frequent Target shopper. Uh, they have the regular app where you can order and essentially find coupons online. They have the Target Cartwheel app, which allows you to uh, essentially scan barcodes, even shop and make shopping lists and it'll tell you things that are on sale like they do a lot of five or ten percent off items but that kind of little stuff adds up uh, but now for Black Friday especially they've integrated a, a map system indoor mapping system um, into their app so you're gonna be able to find especially on Black Friday the Black Friday deals like the DVD player that you have to have the camera you have to have it'll give you the directions so you don't have to search around the store and go where excuse me you know what am I doing um, you will have it on your phone already which I think is really neat and could have changed quite a few things as far as apps go in, in retail shopping at least and it might be a, a way for retail to kind of stay relevant is you know just kind of making it even easier in that regard when you go into shop it's not overwhelming going oh gosh where is this in pennies or where is this in Sears I can just where is the pallet with all the VCRs <laughs> well, are they, and are they going to carry this forward am I going to be able to continue to have a map of the store and where things are yes yeah, it, it just kind of one of their big pushes is just the Black Friday sales things, but it's it looks like it's going to be something that they're going to keep it's good. for it. Because for me, that's huge. Like over the weekend, I wanted to go in and I wanted two things at Target. Uh, and it, and actually, I wanted a third thing that I couldn't find and just gave up. But that, that would be huge to be able to look up where something is in the store, get in, get out, and not have to ask someone. I asked someone if it... I was actually looking for if you've ever seen the magnetic covers for um, heating and air conditioning grates. Um, I was looking for those, and they were like, oh, we may have them in housewares and seasonal. So I, I was all over the store, and, and people, uh, some people didn't know what I was talking about. Um, but to be able to look to see if something's available and then just quickly go find it and then get back out of the store, especially at this time of year when people are just going crazy for, for seasonal holiday Christmas shopping. Yeah. I, definitely, I definitely don't miss that idea of like going to, like, oh, yeah, let's go to the store. I have a couple of things to, to, to get. And you just wander the store looking for those couple of things. And who knows how many other things you pick up along the way, right? Uh, well, I'm, I'm interested to see what happens with Target this holiday season because, of, as we all remember, the Target hack, um, where a lot of credit card numbers were taken, um, they're claiming, I, I saw a news article the other day, that Target is going to lose um, $1 billion this holiday shopping season. Um, that's the equivalent of all the discounts they're giving, everything on Black Friday, additional, um, I think, percentages off um, if you buy so much additional target gift cards if you when you spend so much um, things of that nature they're they're going to equate that what they're saying right now is to about a billion dollars just that just in, more in lost revenue just just for goodwill or just because of the no because drive. they're trying to get people back in the store because of the the number the, the decline in, in mm. foot traffic well you know what it, 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 still the best time to go to be the most secure at a store like that is after they've had a big breach like they've had. Because mm -hmm. you know it's going to be completely... You, your card's not going to be safer anywhere else. Because they're not going to let that happen again. They've gone through all their upgrades. They've gone through all that stuff. So right now, if there's anywhere you want it to shop, it's probably Target right now. And Home Depot. And Home Depot. Yeah. <laughs> and home, yeah, and, yeah, and Home Depot, exactly. Which is uh, funny, because the breach at Home Depot was actually larger. Was it? They actually lost more information... And they're wondering if people have become desensitized to the whole breach. I think people generally um, have. So they, they, they're just like, yeah, whatever. It got lost again. Or the, the question is, are people desensitized to it? Or is there more trust for their money will actually be returned mm -hmm. due, to the, due to the known issues with the, with different breaches and different Well, if nothing else, yeah. So, so you, think, you think people just got more familiar with what is my credit card policy? Should I even right. be concerned with yeah. this? But, and that's where it's that's a hard thing to measure, right? How do you figure out what people are thinking and why mm -hmm. they're doing? What so I know uh, so my mother got thing. my mother got hit with the uh, the Target breach last year, and um, like they took like uh, one or two hundred bucks out of her account, and it was back I think within a week. Mm -hmm. So 
I mean, it stinks in the meantime, but uh, you know, at least it take, it's taken care of. You're not on the hook for it. So I got nailed with uh, PayPal. I lost um, my bank card and uh, a credit card. I had been purchases on both. Um, one was for a Dell laptop charger and Xbox Live, <laughs> which they sent to my house. Huh. <laughs> so they weren't very good at stealing things anyways. Sorry, guys. <laughs> wow. All right. On that point, if you have an awesome thing in the week, please hit us up. Awesomecast at SorgatronMedia.com or in the chat or at Awesomecast on the Twitters. Uh, so let's give a plug out to our good friends at Slice on Broadway. Katie, you got to you got to pick it up tonight. Thank you for that, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. We, I, we were discussing how a, a warm pizza keeps your hands much warmer than uh, gloves could ever do it. Plus, you make friends walking with pizza. You always yes. make friends. <laughs> It's good life advice. Always carry a pizza. Awesome. Go check them out. They're down at SliceOnBroadway.com, uh, right here on Broadway Avenue in Beachview, PA. Uh, then the South Hills in Pittsburgh. We're in the city of Pittsburgh here. Uh, and they also have a second location down on Main Street in Carnegie, PA. Uh, but they uh, help us out. And they provide us pizza here every week for our in-studio guests like Katie and the dog. Uh-huh. Who's, who's who's sleeping over there? <laughs> I um, know you can't you can't see him. He's just right here. Below the yes, screen. Uh, but he he might he might climb over there. <laughs> you, you never know. Um, but uh, go please check him out. Uh, check him out on the uh, Twitters, on Facebook, and I'll let him know that you heard about him from uh, us over here at the Awesome Cast, and we thank him for their support of the show. Uh, all right, we got a few news items here uh, to dive into. I think this is rather appropriate. Um, there is a company called cloud and heat that is, uh, uh, putting servers in homes and offices, uh, and the heat, you can use the heat from them in your house for f- just as free heat for, for housing the, uh, servers. Um, cloud is a cloud infrastructure company. It started distributing the servers to people. Uh, I guess you have to pay for the installation, but beyond that, all the heat can get funneled out. Uh, from these cabinets and uh, and it heats your home and it gets funneled outside uh, in the summer so you're not you know adding on from that uh, so I don't know what do you think about this idea it, it, it's it's like it's like SETI at home like quantified so me. well here here's my question and, and I don't know what kind of data you keep in the cloud as far as from past all the video that if I always say that if promotional material was stolen and distributed to the internet, certain people would, a lot of companies would want people to read that obviously, because it's all promotional material. But when it comes to personal items, personal photos, um, account numbers, like I said, I don't know everything that you store in the cloud. Do you really want that sitting in someone who's trying to save a buck? on their heating (laughs) bill. So what keeps someone from cloning drives or selling an entire server or rack of drives with who knows what information on it? And and I apologize because maybe I missed a portion of it. I don't know what they actually store in this cloud. That's what I'm wondering too. And this is all, of course, it's only in Germany right now. Um, But I go, I think it'd be a nice concept to bring over here too. Yeah, so I wonder what kind of information uh, that this company uh, Quarna Q A R N O T is uh, is is is, they're a French cloud company. Uh, Oh no, this is different. Actually, this is a different company that's working on a similar program over there. Um, So Cloud and Heat, of course, is the company that's that's doing this one. Um, But it's an interesting idea to kind of at least recycle that heat, and then rather than having these giant facilities. Uh, that you need to power and heat, you know, it, it gets to spread that out. And, and, but how would you feel? How would you feel if this was Google doing this and all your mail was and all my screen? Gmail and all of my Google Docs are sitting on somebody's, you know, I've always like, I don't know how many times I've had a web server and was just like, I know that this is sitting on some college kid's computer in their closet, closet somewhere. You know, I mean, you know, like you really don't know where your stuff is. You know, I think you'd be surprised when you find out what kind of server your stuff is actually sitting on sometimes, you know, um, I you ever, you know, I think it's interesting to look at the back, what Backblaze puts all my stuff on and all my stuff goes on Backblaze, mm-hmm. um, you know, and those are like the kind of these self-made 
Uh, well, I guess they have somebody else manufacturing them now. Uh, giant bays of drives, you know, somewhere. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah. And then how, how would you feel saying, you know, hey, somebody has God knows what in my basement, you know, uh, information wise. Yeah. What happens if you're hosting someone's inappropriate material mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and, and then the feds come in mm-hmm. to your house to seize all the equipment. And then are they now seizing my equipment? You know, how far does that extend? You know, um, yeah, yeah. are they able to put their stuff on it? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then suddenly now it's yours, but they've put the stuff on it. Well, it, I mean, it well just... generally this is a, it sits here. Yeah. It's connected to the internet. Uh, this, this cloud and heat company has whatever cloud services they're offering. Mm-hmm. So it could be serving somebody's website, could be serving somebody's Google drive equivalent, mm-hmm. you know, whatever services they're offering a chunk of that, probably a redundant chunk of that is going to be stuck on there. So it could be everything from somebody's business documents to their porn for all, you know, mm-hmm. you know, so, but it, it, it's an interesting concept. Um, I think ideally, I don't, I don't think. Anybody would knock on your door to take it. I think they would be subpoenaing through subpoenaing through things and getting just access to the servers, um, you know, the regular way. But um, but it's just a thing concept. It's um, and the ter- that Germany is the first place they're doing this is kind of interesting too. Which yeah, they're heavily into private, the keeping data private. I, I, I'm sure you have no access to so. this thing. It's gonna be, um, it's gonna be encrypted. It's in a fireproof cabinet that they've installed. They say you actually do have to pay for the installation, which they say is about the equivalent of putting a new heating system in. But then you don't pay for heat anymore. I think they actually also pay for a portion of the uh, electric- electricity bills for running the server, too. What so. about the Internet? Think about the bandwidth coming out of your house. <laughs> I imagine they're installing their own line at that point. <laughs> they have to be. Have to be like, oh, can I get a little piece of that? Maybe, you know? you know that'd be great you know you're like why don't you just take care of all my utilities mm-hmm. you know heat my water while you're at it actually it probably would if you if you work it up right right so i think that's an awesome idea so um some other stuff here uh new york city this is good okay so so when's the last time you ran into a phone booth do i look like superman <laughs> They actually, I, I used to see a number of phone booths in this short one block walk from the T station downtown to the steel building because there were two pay phones in the T station. And then there was actually a whole room of pay phones in, you, in, in the steel building. Mm-hmm. And uh, probably about two years ago, they ripped out all of the phone booths in the U.S. steel building. And I think the remaining phone booths in the um, T station are gone as well. Um, yeah. It usually it's just like these giant like rooms. There are husks of there's a um, there is a uh, travel uh, rest stop up uh, around Jamestown, New York on Lake Chautauqua. And again, like and this thing is not even probably 10 years old, but again, a giant room that probably had like four to eight phones just empty. Just like you see all the wooden uh, cutouts from where they were at. They just they just took them all out. Um, well, New York City has a lot of these kinds of situations. And uh, they're going to blanket the city in free public Wi-Fi with 10,000 stations. Uh, basically, they're going to replace these stations like or replace the um, uh, the 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 phone booths with these kind of kiosks. Um, they're going to turn them into public Wi-Fi. The kiosks, which are taller and narrower than the average phone booth, uh, according to Ars Technica, but preserve the uh, advertising space, will have up to gigabytes, gigabit speeds and charging stations for devices, according to this press release. So, and they say they're going to pay for the entire thing with advertising. Because I, I, I think this is brilliant. Just merely based on the charging station... And the fact that they're just, it's going to be free Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah just think you're, you're anywhere in the city. How many times have you needed to charge your phone? And it's a giant billboard. They love putting billboards up everywhere in the city. Uh, they can pay for it just with that. And then you have Wi-Fi everywhere. You just blanketed the city in, in Wi-Fi with all these stations. I think that's tremendous. I think, I think every city should do this and the entire state of Nebraska. 
Uh, the uh, they're calling it Link NYC if you want to look that up as well. So, um, and they're looking to they did in 2012 the city did a very small scale uh, rollout of the Wi-Fi hotspots in 10 phone booths in 2013. Um, they're re they're just redesigning and repurposing it for a, for a larger scale rollout here as well. And, and Pittsburgh Pittsburgh has something like this. We have we have the Pittsburgh Wi-Fi that, that's free. I think a couple hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because Pittsburgh and, and I'd be interested to know how this works too in New York City. Pittsburgh's Wi-Fi is actually on a, on a lot of the different phone poles and light poles, um, so you don't get the the nicety of a, of a charging station or and they're, they're obviously probably not paying for it through advertising because where it's located, but it's all broadcast down. So if you're in a building above pretty much the second, third floor, you're really probably not going to pick up a decent signal. Um, I've actually had to use external connectivity from time to time and back before and this was years ago, back before hotspots and whatnot. And I would constantly run down to the bottom of the building, hop on the internet, and then run back upstairs. Um, but I'll be interested to see how this works. So our, what's going to happen in hotels, right, where you pay a $15 a night surcharge to get on the internet? Or is it not going to work there because it's it's just ground level? Yeah, it's probably not going to reach up that high if if, it, if it's on that level. And, I mean, and will will it work? Will it? Are there are there phone booths in their train stations? And if so, I know they've been working on bringing internet to a lot of their different um, underground. Oh, that'd be great! If, if they can service the train stations through this. Yes, this that'd be, be huge. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is actually all like the Matrix, and they're cutting all the hard lines. So we're stuck. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, I got one more here, and we'll, I know you guys got a few stories too. Um, PlayStation View. Uh, this is announced by Sony here. I think uh, I think today or yesterday. Um, they're going to bring over seventy-five channels of content. Uh, live live streaming, broadcast TV content. PlayStation Two. I'm sorry. It's PlayStation Three. PlayStation Four. And iPad, iPad owners, um, they say it's going to be TiVo mixed with a sling box that delivers live cable channels and has payment plans that go month to month instead of the early contracts. So you'll be able to stream live TV when you're at home. Da, 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 da. Um, and they've already signed on CBS, Discovery, Fox, NBC, and Viacom. Oh, I think Viacom's kind of a CBS throwaway there. Um that's like most of what you're going to get on cable. So as long as you have a PlayStation or I guess an iPad, you could potentially ditch your cable for this. As long as you have Internet. Well, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. But but it's, but it's an alternative. This is the this is something that we've heard Apple's been trying to do for for a while. Uh, we wonder if Xbox is going to be jumping into this because they seem to be changing their strategy with the new uh, the new the new head over there. Um, and, and I've always wondered when we were going to get a service like this. And, and I'm going to TiVo mixed with Slingbox. Um, where was it? Even crazier than meeting comrades. It's where you can set you can set a recording. You can get access to some on-demand content, and you're going to be able to record things. So the interesting thing is, so if I recorded Arrow, since we were talking about Arrow earlier, if I recorded Arrow, does anyone else really have to record Arrow? They only really need to store it once. Seems kind of redundant, doesn't it? Right. Like, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they technically just record every hour of TV off all seventy-five channels, and then if anyone requested it, it would then spit it back out. Like, I don't need to record it, and you record it, and Dutters records it, and Mike records it. And Mongo records it. 
because it's just going to be the same thing recorded over and over and over again. And I think it's, it's really, I think it's sorry. a rights thing. I think it's a rights thing at some point too. You know, we have the on-demand version that sits here, right? And you mm-hmm. have the right to that, or you have a windowed right to that, right? Like maybe we'll have that available to you on your Xfinity box for the next week, you know, mm-hmm. or however that, whatever that windowing works versus I can TiVo it and it can sit there as long as I want it to. I own that on this uh, place of data, which is a TiVo box, or what we designated is this TiVo box thing in the cloud, which is probably how this is going to work. Um, so I have a different ownership right to use that when I want to. I know it seems redundant. I know, like, like you yeah, look at it and you're point. like, why does this? Why do these bits need to be replicated so many ways? And that makes so many difference in these bits over here, because um, it's the same show, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's not, you know, that TiVo recording includes all of the, uh, all of the, you know, vampire diaries walking out in front of your show and telling you to go watch it and the, all the commercials and everything like that versus the on demand version. It's been a while since I've had a cable on demand, but usually they'd have like an ad or something. And that was about it. Like it was pretty much straightforward. Right. Um, or maybe they do have some ads baked in there, a little bit of their own, uh, kind of design, but, um, yeah. I haven't played around a lot with the the Verizon app on my on my different devices because it'll it'll live stream a, a number of channels. I'm not piping it from Verizon to my house and then out to a device. I'm sure it goes to somewhere at Verizon to get that data. Mm-hmm. I'm interested to see how they do localized commercials. So obviously in Pittsburgh, I get a subset of commercials that are for companies like AT&T that everyone would get. And then I get a subset of commercials that are for local Pittsburgh type. Well, I think, I think that works the same way that you would if you had uh, satellite TV. Um, Cause you're going to get your local, local commercials um, through your local networks. Right. Uh, and ideally well, the CW doesn't do that. Right. So like if I have the CW app on the Xbox, mm-hmm. which I used a lot when I didn't have cable, they did not lo- They didn't have live TV. Everything was on demand. But when I watched the, and actually that's how I watched probably the first one and a half seasons of Arrow was the day after I fired up the CW app on the Xbox and, and watched But it's interesting because the one thing that was very redundant on those shows was the commercials to the point where I don't know if it was the CW not getting enough companies to advertise or the cost was too high or they just didn't care. But a lot of times, and it makes the CW app look broken, but it's not, you'll actually get the same commercial three times in a row. I've noticed that on anything Viacom. Okay. I used to try to watch uh, Impact Wrestling on Spike TV's website, and it was so broken, and I would get the same commercial over and over again, regardless. Um, and the player would just not work half the time. I, and CW was another one that I had, like, the few times I had to go and, like, okay, let's watch the first episodes of this, and then we can catch up on the rest of it on Hulu, like, through their website or something. It was just so insane to try to watch through it um because of their their ad layout is just so bad so absolutely bad like i think they're just i think just the wrong people of icom are involved in it and not paying attention mm-hmm. so i'll be interested to see how they do commercials yeah so uh but still it, it, this is their first kind of uh look at this kind of you know over the top hey get you a little bit of everything you know um I, I'm interested. It's probably not going to be. Um, the, I don't think they have pricing rolled out yet. Uh, but and of course, you have to have a PlayStation order to do it. So, but I'd be or inter- an iPad. But I'd be interested to see. Do we? See, yeah, or an iPad. That that seems weird. Um, but but then I also wonder if if I get one of those like cheap little PlayStation TVs, maybe I could get it on that too. You know, I'd imagine. So, awesome. Um, so you guys got a couple stories here. Um, what's going on with, uh, what's BuzzFeed doing? 
BuzzFeed has, has jumped on the thing now. Um, if if you're noticing with the apps, is a lot of chat apps. Um, yeah. You see regular chat apps. You see Yik Yak. There's there's a lot of different um, Snapchat even those kind of chat apps. Um, BuzzFeed has jumped on what they call WhatsApp. It's uh, not so big here. Really big in Asia, especially in China. Um, it's it's a conversation app. You can have um, group chats you could have one-on-one chats it kind of almost looks like a walkie when you um download the app and that's how you talk to each other and you could send videos and it just kind of a thing goes back and forth um what they're they're jumping on that is you can essentially sign up to chat with buzzfeed and they will send you links to stories and and this is kind of way they're reaching out you said whatsapp did you mean wechat wechat WeChat. i'm sorry (laughs) too many chats this is what i know i know there's so many of them yeah sorry about that yeah it's uh yeah wechat and um, essentially, yeah, you you chat with uh, they send you things, and this is a way that they're finding reaches. Uh, they're find they said the article that they were finding that a lot of their visits to the website were kind of they called them dark, where they weren't exactly sure how they ended up on the website. So it could be coming from these sources, like these chat sources of friends sending things over chat services that they're not able to pick up on yet, as far as tracking those. Um, so they're just kind of branching out and see what they can kind of uh, reach they can have here and especially with their international market it sounds like hmm. so they're jumping on board <laughs> when are we going to be over and uh, or inundated with inundated would be the, I guess the word with having to install 50 different chat apps just to hit every or go everywhere we want to go I mean I was talking to someone today at work and it was like well I use Facebook Messenger to talk to these people, and I direct message these people on Twitter, and then I have, I follow some people on Foursquare, and I use Hangout and Google Chat, and I'm looking through my phone right now for, for everything. I, I, I message these people and text these family members, and now I have to WeChat, and I'm going to have to do this, that. It's yeah, just- yeah, it feels like, like, like you have, like, okay, at least everybody... I can follow it as long as everybody's on like the the three or four major platforms, right? Like your Facebook, Google, and and Apple versions, right? But uh, we start getting like WeChat, and WhatsApp, like like I I don't. And granted, this is other places and other mm-hmm. groups of people. And I think that's maybe maybe that's it too. Like we, I don't, do you know anybody that's on these kinds of apps? Like it feels like everybody in our circle seem to be kind of on the major players. Well, one, we're old. Yeah, yeah. We're old in the tech world. We are very old. Um, you'll find a lot more of these. Um, these apps are very good for, because the kids, I'm going to say, this is, yeah, you want to get off my lawn here. Uh, the kids are using apps like this because yeah. there aren't people like us on them. But this is a way for them to connect. I think you'll see a lot more specialized groups and maybe um, different subcultures using specific apps because they know that, you know what, the only people that use these apps are the uh, people who are just like me and, and then they're able to connect Bob's that way. Mom's not going to be on this one. Nope. <laughs> Mom's not going to be looking at this stuff. I don't have to worry about this, you know, and, and I think, um, especially with a lot of these chats, you're going to find the different subcultures. Like, I think you're going to find, like, I, I'm sure there's a whole social network that furries specifically use and that's, I mean, even as silly as it sounds, tout and tout how that was a, a wrestling thing. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was something that everybody took to from there. And that's how, I mean, that was mainly the people that used it. It just, it, somebody latching onto it and they're going, hey, and their specific group of friends and they latch onto it. So you're almost catering and having to find your own group. And, but like I said, a lot of it's, we're old. <laughs> we don't have, we can't keep up with these chats. I, I have, with with all these emerging, even studying it, it's every day it's something new and it's, it's overwhelming. Ga- it's got to be a moving target too, yeah. right? Well, yeah, and, I, and I know people. I know people that use Kick. I know people that use WhatsApp. Mm-hmm. I know people that use a number of them. And just even for the younger generation, aren't they? I can't. Well, maybe they just have a ton of time to be able to jump from chat to chat to chat. Uh, I don't know about that because I feel like I, I feel like I've done the same thing. Because as we went through, like I started with ICQ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and then I and then I, I rolled along with everybody as they they rolled into AOL Instant Instant Messenger, um, and then we had to roll on into you know what you know MySpace chat or whatever, yeah. and and and, and uh, I chat to keep drugs. up with work. What's that for for that for what you're talking about? People got up from here and went over they, here. You're saying they were bigger movements. There there, there were movements now, like I, like I was saying. 
now I know people, like if I want to contact certain people, I know to hit them up on Facebook Messenger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. If I want to contact other people, I need to jump on Google Chat. Yeah. I'm stuck at a concert with it, no electricity or power or communication. I need fire chat. I mean, there's like, there's 18,000 different chats and it, I, it's not everyone's there. It's not three chats and everyone's moving from one to the next. It's everyone is on there. There's only subsets of people on certain ones. I think they're also seeing that these developers are seeing dollar signs because now they're monetizing all these chats. I mean, I don't know if you saw Snapchat. You can now send money to your friends through Snapchat, Mm -hmm. which is crazy if you think about it. Um, It would be so easy. Even we were talking about different apps today and Yik Yak. It'd be so easy to monetize Yik Yak in regards to... What's a Yik Yak? You don't know what Yik Yak is? I don't think I know a Yik Yak. See, now you're showing your age. Uh, Yik Yik Yak is essentially what you do. it's, It's... I, I haven't one hundred percent caught onto it yet. I'm not cool enough to totally get Yik Yak. I'm sorry. Um, it is literally a list of anonymous. It's completely anonymous. You don't sign. You sign in that you give it okay for your um their your location and that's it. It's all geolocation and all it is is just random things like someone here is if if you see something say something. Can it be Thursday yet, guys? We know to shoot Yik Yak. Ride the yak. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really big with college campuses. Um, most of my stuff is either, especially, you know, Point Park, Duquesne, they'll specifically mention schools. And you post these things and people will either up it or down it. And you get one vote per thing, uh, per little tweet or you can, or message, and you can reply to it. Uh, this one, like, says, hottie alert in the library. Um, just uh, anything. There's there's some, some of these get a little dirty, but um, totally anonymous. It's all location near you. And... It's is there, is, and, and there's an app? Yeah. yeah, I just sent it to my phone right now. Yik Yak. Mm-hmm. And it's a little yak. <laughs> so, we sent it, so send it to your phone. So let me, let me Yik Yak got into some trouble when it first came out because it was um, being used for bullying. Because oh. it's completely anonymous, they could say so-and-so, blah, you know, whatever. But they, they kind of... It, at least what I've seen, it hasn't been as bad. Um, but you could is something as simple as this. What you do is you have advertisers say, I'm Starbucks, and I... I'm just sitting here going, mm, I could go for a uh, latte. I could go for a, you know, a gingerbread latte right now. And then suddenly some kid's going, you know what? I really want a latte. You know, you just mentioned these brands. You know, my favorite pizza place is um, Slice on Broadway. And then you're suddenly you have, oh, wait a minute. I could go for pizza. So it's, it, it's just interesting how these, I think a lot of these places are just seeing dollar signs and how they can get advertising support. And mm-hmm. we're get, so Anything you're downloading is probably on your phone because they're hoping to sell something mm-hmm. nothing's ever free you know well if it's if it's private <laughs> no we're all you can't no so if it if it's private how do you oh so it's how does it know where you are your location see i don't i don't know how if, private is it i mean it's not you're not yeah. like actually signing up with your with your name or something right? no it's absolutely like right you just like, I'm in this already. If you refresh, you probably see it says, what's up, Chilla? I don't think he's close enough. I, 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 got, what's, I got what's up, Chilla. Yeah. It's um, in the stream. I don't know if Chilla's I'm not gonna. Here. I'm not going to read that one above it. Yeah, um, yeah. Sorry. How do you How do you see that? Um, if you just, it's a refresh, you might not be uh, close enough to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. It's just like a location thing. Yeah. Um, my science teacher just admitted uh, that he is prepared for the zombie apocalypse. One awesome dude. Can it be Thursday yet? Um, yeah, I got the hottie alert in the library. Yeah, Thanks for hotties that. in the library, guys. Hotties in the library, look out. Hey, guy or girl could go either way. It doesn't specifically exactly. say. Exactly. Mm. The, lo- the lovey emoticons. Mm-hmm. So um, so go check that out. Um, <laughs> now we're promoting UK. But, but you, um, can't, you can't post pictures or anything. No. That's it. It's, That's it. It. it's just a text app. Interesting. And take a peek. There's a featured rejected movie sequels. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. My yaks. <laughs> My top yak. That, 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 that could get me in trouble. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, yikyakapp.com if you want to check that out. <laughs> but yeah, chats are where it's at right now, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, the kids, the kids. Yeah, it's, I mean, this stuff is like festering on the campuses, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so and it's going to be different from place to place. 
Oh, I thought that you know we should get we should get Eamon in here and just pick his brain. He's like, what are the kids doing now? <laughs> what, are the kids, what are people doing in San Antonio? Yeah, what are the kids doing? What are the kids doing? I that'll be a side that'll be a side discussion on our our uh, podcast later. There so. is um there is a uh, at pod camp. There is a presentation about uh, grandmas on Facebook. Now what do I do? Uh, discussing on what the other social media oh, wow. platforms that they're using. I remember reading that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I still have to go through the sessions. So. Um, Anyways, um, but I'll just, not that I'm sitting on a, a session, I'll just be running around filming everything. But uh, it'll be fun. It'll mm-hmm. be fun. Uh, so Facebook wants to do LinkedIn better than LinkedIn? Yeah. What's up there? Uh, they um, are trying to make it more work-based because it, uh, Facebook is it, essentially, a lot of places block Facebook because the, it's mm-hmm. it's a killer on productivity. Uh, they said what, they spend an average of 40 minutes a day on the site. And they want to make this as like a social collaboration sharing site. So it's almost a competi- It's almost competing with uh, Google Drive or even Microsoft Office, and especially in their collaboration tools. So it's called Facebook at Work. It, there's it's just kind of like secret talks right now that there. I just happened to pick this up, um, but it, it's a lot of collaboration, chat, and networking. And what it's going to be able to do is now you can let fa- Facebook back into the office. It's a way for Facebook to be- get back into the offices, which is a pretty nifty trick, if you ask me. But um, it'll be another collaboration tool. I wonder if it'll be um, kind of like Dropbox even. Give well, they, them already, a run. they do already have um, like Microsoft Word integration. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think they did a little piece of it. To, mm-hmm. to so we're allowed, we're allowed to use LinkedIn. We're not where I work. We're, we're allowed to use LinkedIn where Facebook is blocked. Anything that's file sharing is blocked. Um, I would personally love this as long as they lifted the ban on on Facebook when they launched this. Because, again, I'm tired from running from site to site. My LinkedIn profile for many, many years said... I drink coffee and listen to music. That was my job because I went on there when it first launched and I was like, man, this is kind of boring. I, there's not many people on here I know and I never went back. Um, then I started seeing people were actually looking me up and it was like, <laughs> well, I should probably change that because it looks like I just sit around in my pajamas all day. So so I went and updated my, my LinkedIn and I'll, I'm not going to lie, I got like halfway through updating it and it was like, okay, I'm bored with this again. Just, just I, I'm gone. I'm out. So I left, and now I have like 132 pending requests for LinkedIn friends. Oh, you're you're fine until you like start signing up for some of those groups, and those emails are just relentless. Mm-hmm. Oh mm-hmm. my god! I'm like, oh, we help you become part of the community, and then they get some new connections. It's like, no, no, it's just like you just get pounded, and you don't want to dive into any of it. It, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's so rough. Um, I, I, I kind of made a pact to start updating it and like put an update to it like once a week at least. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually have like I have make sure I put like a Twitter like update to it once a day and, and just to see what happens, you know, uh, mm-hmm. see if I get on somebody's radar or something, you know, mm-hmm. because that's what's supposed to be there for. Um, but uh, I've, I've noticed a lot of, you know, not more, a lot more eyeballs on it, but I don't know if that really turns into anything. So, um, I don't know. I'm still really not sold on LinkedIn other than it's a living, breathing portfolio for me. Um, and I think when you, uh, say, you know, we're going to make Facebook a business platform and a LinkedIn like platform. Um, and then you look at so many people that it's also their personal communication platform. There needs to be a separation there. And I think that gets fuzzy Mm -hmm. and I already don't trust Facebook for security. So. Anyways, um, as I'm losing my voice, um, I like this one, uh, this this T9 uh, keyboard yeah. app on here. So since since Dutters brought back the iPhone, Woo! she can now download the Type 9 keyboard. Nice. Which kicks you back to the old Tap 2 twice for B and, <clears throat> and, and whatnot for all the other letters of the alphabet. And zero is is space along with, I think one is the, all the different symbols. Um, so, so hello would be like one, four, three, three, five, 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 five. Like, five, is there like a primer on here that shows six. you, 
Is, is there a primer on here that shows you like how to type hello in certain words? Like I think, there's, there's, I think there is. Yeah, there's like a. That's a, amazing. Um, my my grandfather, by the way, would kill at this thing. Well, and the funny part was, is it would always get aggravating, right? When when you were trying to like do a period, and period was like somewhere deep into one, I think it was, or, mm-hmm. or maybe zero, and and you 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 pass it by one, and then have to hit that thing like that that whatever that number was like six more times, and you might pass it. it it's just hysterical. So th- this brings back so many memories of of typing on a, a flip phone. Um, I've actually thought about taking Carla's phone and installing this keyboard and not telling her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I started thinking about, I, I was thinking back to like the flip phone days. And um, for me, like, okay, so Twitter was, was, was a big thing. And we, I, we were T9 texting Twitter at that point. Right. Um, now, did you use did you use the texting where like C was two two two, or did you use it where you would type like each whatever letter the key was on, you would only hit it once, and as you typed, it would narrow down what word you were actually typing. Um, I don't think I ever got the hang of that second one. It was like, okay. like two, 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 yeah, two, neither two. did I. So but. like like so it was really arduous to be able to do that. <laughs> I, I just couldn't get get into that 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 autocomplete function. But, but, you know, thinking how much I did at, at, at the time, the internet never worked. There was no point, right? Uh, but you were doing Twitter, and I think we were trying to get Bright Kite to check in places to work. <laughs> um, and I downloaded two games, Doom RPG and, uh, and Tetris, and spent so much time on those games, right? On a flip phone, on like I think it was a Motorola V90 or something. Was um, it was a little silver phone? Yeah, a little silver ones. Yeah. Oh, that was one of my. Favorite I remember I had I had a time. I had a I had a Motorola and I had an LG, and yeah. one had the one had the little square. I think the Motorola had a square screen, screen and then mm-hmm. when I updated LG, I had a vertical screen, and that was the big update. Um, so yeah, yeah, those those were the days. That to an iPhone, my God, jeez. <laughs> So, um, bring back memories. I pulled up some pictures of, of Doom. R- I think you can get like Doom RPG for the iPhone. And they did like update the graphics and everything. But this is like, I mean, it was basically like I, I actually get a little bit of the pictures here. I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys ever saw these, but it was like, yeah, they kind of. I mean, it was Doom. It was Doom as you remembered it, but like step by step, and you know, because you had your directional arrows, and that was it. Just that little square. And there was there it was doom, <laughs> but um, and like you, you like take turns to fight the monsters and stuff like that. But um, it was all right. It, it was it was pretty good for those little those little flip phones. But all right, um, let's touch on a couple. Okay, no, this Nokia stuff. Nokia, Nokia, Nokia. Do we know what, what's our official? I forgot what our pr- official pronunciation on on the show is. Um, so, so Microsoft bought the cell phone wing of Nokia, right? So they bought, yes. Then they, they have the rights to use the name for, I think, five more years on their phones. They could make all their phones still be, instead of being Windows phones or whatever they're calling them, Lumia. They're just calling them the Lumia series, right? Like what right. Microsoft Lumia. They could still be Nokia phones, which has, I think, a pretty heavy brand name. Correct. And I think they're also entitled to the Nokia apps. So Nokia, their, their mapping system. And which is still owned by Nokia. Right. And like their the- camera app. And, and some of that technology is actually retained by Nokia. It's primarily, I think, the cell phone wing of technology and the Lumia brand became Microsoft's. So Nokia, the original, went out and announced an Android tablet? Yes. Because that makes sense right now. And, and I'm wondering if there wasn't some kind of behind the scenes, we didn't hear about it, where Nokia said to Microsoft, look, your phones aren't necessarily selling. We're sorry. But we need to branch out 
and we're going to sell not only Windows OS on our devices, but we're going to sell Linux. Or well, Linux, and they already Android. had there was a there was a thing where right they before right before um, uh, Microsoft officially took over, they released a, a, a few Android phones. Yes, and, and they were, but they were in markets like India and yeah, there was none. Because I, you're not going to drop a Windows phone in those in those markets. It's just not going right. to work. Um, but it, and Nokia has always been good to have those lower end kind of market phones. That's why you see Nokia all over the world, at least you used to. Um, but here they are with an Android tablet. I mm-hmm. that, that's such a mess. And and if you look at it, it looks exactly like an iPad, new iPad Mini. It does too. Exactly. It has the it has the metal, the metal frame, the rounded corners. The, the port on it looks like lightning. Um, it's running a. It's actually running an Intel chip with two gig of RAM, thirty two gig of storage. Um, runs lolly Android five lollipop. And and the interesting thing too though is is in typical third party fashion. They put their own launcher front end on the device, which runs what they call Z Launcher, which which lets you start writing on the screen with your finger to find and launch apps. So if you want to launch Yik Yak, you know, pull up the device and you just start writing, I guess, with your finger Yik Yak, and it narrows down the apps. Yik Yak. <laughs> By the way, back to the Yik Yak. Uh, uh, Wheels lives down by uh, California University, and he says, "OMG, Yik Yak is great to read around this college town." <laughs> I'm sure he's got some. And great you can stuff. actually set. It looks like in Yik Yak too. You can actually set where you want it to read from. So I can like go center it on like Pitt University or something, or in the, in the peak tab, you can do a search and you can search for like Pitt. I found Pitt University. So I'm in peak. There's new and hot. Peak near yeah. base. I get I, okay. It gives me base state college, Bowling Green State University, um, University of Memphis. Let's see what's going on at the University of Memphis. Oh, okay. University of Memphis. Someone, please tell me why the Pens game isn't on our TVs. Oh. Hey. There you go. Anyways, enough yik yak for now. Um, anyways, uh, big stuff coming up this weekend. Podcam Pittsburgh, of course, will all be there uh, in some capacity. Uh, Dennis, aren't you doing a session too? I think I am. Yes. Well, I was I was abandoned by a P. Dutters. Oh no. Yeah. Butthead. Uh, so it may be a solo debtor's in- adventure here. Um, it may involve ICP. You never know what I might pull out. <laughs> But uh, it may have to do with uh, subcultures and um, social media. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, I believe I'm tacked on to do the uh, video podcasting 101 and 201. Although it looks like the lips and folks will be talking about a lot of the stuff I want to talk about. So, uh, But we'll definitely get into Wirecast and stuff that we do here in the studio as far as that goes. So uh, we'll t- I want to talk about just general kind of taking video. I, I, I think I want to turn it more into a video for the web. rather. Than video podcasting is, is kind of a heavy worded thing so uh so we'll get that here updated uh through the week and of course awesome cast live will be uh friday or sunday god sunday at uh 2 p.m there that'll be the the show for the week uh so you go you guys can uh, go check us out live and join us katie will be there as well and we'll do who knows who else we'll drag in i think we get the bigger room for this one Ooh, big room. So we'll be on stage. Oh, oh geez. So, and I'll have no time to set up, so this will be really interesting. Yes, I can't wait. Um, so uh, with that, uh, what's, what else is coming up? Uh, startup job fair yeah, that's, is uh, Thursday. You'll Thursday be around night, for yeah. that. It'll be at CMU. Yeah, I'm curious to see what happens with that. I think it should be fun. I'm going, yeah, I signed up to attend. So I'll let you know what that goes. Awesome. And, of course, uh, still going on, Yajagoff, who is the keynote presenter. He's got, I saw some clips from his video he was shooting with David Conrad. Yes, the actor. Yes, that guy from the first season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yes. Um, and uh, he's going to be the keynote uh, for Podcamp Pittsburgh there Saturday morning. Uh, if you go to Yajagoff.com, he's still running the campaign for uh, getting... Y- 
the word Jagoff in the Webster's Dictionary. So please go support that. It's a worthy cause. And I think somebody stepped up and said they were going to donate for every uh, signature to to a cause. So um, I know I saw an update with the numbers, and I think I saw like 11,000 maybe you've signed up for it already. So a uh, pretty good number. So go support all of that. Uh, anything else coming up there, Chilla? That we're looking out for? It's slowing um, up going I'm into the... completely sidetracked with Yik Yak. Oh, <laughs> Learning that you, that you can and people can reply to it, so I was reading people's replies to different different comments. So oh no! There was something coming up. We've lost know. we've lost Chilla the Yik Yak. <laughs> I mean, I'm in the Yik Yak zone. Yik Yak. Um, I'm in Snapchat. What's up? <laughs> I um, go sign up for IBM Verse. I want to see what people think about it. It's an email system that's going to be coming out soon. They're going up against Google Inbox and Microsoft Clutter. Um, mm. They're, they're really give, trying to give it a social focus, so it probably won't go anywhere. But and, and I find it completely hysterical that all these email systems, that you, they, you sign up for this new email box, and, and what's well, you sign up for an account, and what's the thir- first thing they have to ask you for? Oh, your current email address. So if you have an email system that you can't get someone access to without them having another email system, I think you... Because they're all layers at this point, right? Right. So it, I'm interested in how this is going to work, so I actually signed up for it. I have email on Google, Microsoft, Yahoo. I, I have all kinds of Hotmail. Hotmail. I do have a Hotmail account. It's my, Mail it's City. my um, you have a Mail City account? A what? Mail City? No. Tripod? Mail. You got Tripod Mail? Ooh. No, I don't. I was I had watching AOL till it, like, till it died. In, in my sleepy stupor, I was watching WWE Network, and I was watching... Uh, some pay-per-view, and somebody had a sign awkwardly written out was his something something dot tripod dot com like across three <laughs> lines on a sign Ooh. was his entire address. I was like, this is how we did things back then. Kids don't understand. They don't know. They don't Get understand. Off our lawns. They don't understand the <laughs> tripod woes that we had to go through back in the day in Geo Cities. Man, well, didn't you see, did you see Norm said Second Life is still alive? Yes. <laughs> yes. Second Life is never going away. <laughs> Somebody's making money on there. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I, I watched recently a very awkward Second Life documentary. Um, it's, it gets interesting. Hey, um, yeah. Um, on that note, guys, hey, thanks for joining us. Thanks to our awesome chat room. Um, and you can, of course, join us as well in there at live.sorgatronmedia.com about 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And hit us up at AwesomeCast on the Twitters, AwesomeCast on Facebook and Google+. And you can also subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. Big thanks to Michael Allen at Mike Allen PR for helping with notes and tweets all night. And this is the point where I laugh and lose my place because I read the titles that he came up with um, because I write under my notes. Uh, thanks to our awesome <laughs> chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week, and we'll see you at PodCamp. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.